Coming up on City Spotlight, we turn our attention to Mattoon. We'll talk with Mattoon Mayor Tim Gover and Mattoon City Administrator Kyle Gill on the latest going on with construction of the new Public Works building and the construction of the satellite treatment facility. Plus, we'll talk about the latest on economic development in Mattoon. And then we'll head out to Lytle Park and talk with Justin Grady of the Mattoon Township Park District on the current work being done at the park. It's all things Mattoon next on City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at Consolidated.com. And thank you to all of you for joining us for another edition of City Spotlight. Today we're talking Mattoon. We'd like to welcome back to the program the Mayor of Mattoon, Tim Gover. Thank you. Welcome. Glad to be here. Pleasure. And Kyle Go, Mattoon City Administrator. Welcome back, Kyle. Thank you. Glad to be here. Pleasure to have you guys on. First time here in uh, 2017. And uh, congratulations are in order. Uh, Tim, uh, re-elected for uh, a second full term uh, as Mayor of Mattoon. Correct. Thank you very much. And uh, interestingly enough, for the first time in memory of any people, uh, the entire council was re-elected unopposed. Wow. Uh, and that, I don't know that that's happened ever. And so the five of us will be serving again, and I think we have a really good council. Uh, we all work well together. Uh, the council is pro-business, proactive, and uh, trying to move the city ahead. And there's something to be said there about stability. Uh, that's right. Every, everybody, everybody's coming back, so that's... Yeah, the bad thing about our form of government is that potentially all five of us could be replaced or not run again, and so in some cases there could be lack of continuity, and I believe that has happened in the past. Yep. All right, very good. That doesn't happen in Charleston. They have a different form of government, so. That's right, thank you for reminding us of yep. that. Very good. Uh, re elections were recently, and also uh, city budgets were passed. Uh, Kyle, uh, tell us about the, the budget. How did it go constructing that? Um, it was a difficult year, but uh, we were able to get a balanced budget, you know, and. and it's still the unknowns with what's going to happen with state government, but uh, you know employee costs are always an issue. Um, gaining up in health care and pensions, you know, those are the big uh, concerns with everybody in the budget. But we were able to get a balanced budget this year and uh, continue to work forward and have a lot of projects in mind as well. And I commend Kyle and uh, our finance director and city treasurer Beth Wright and city. Uh, Clark, uh, uh, Susan, Susan O'Brien, they both, all three of them worked very, very hard in getting that to a balanced budget and our department heads worked very hard also in getting that to a balanced budget. So I commend the uh, city administration for uh, doing that. It took a lot of work, a lot of time. At the beginning of the spring, beginning of the year is a very busy time for people like Kyle and uh, right. get yeah. those budgets balanced. I know it's been tough with uh, the current uh, economic uh, instability in the state of Illinois, so uh, uh, very good to hear about that. Let's talk, talk about some updates on some things that are being worked on. Uh, the satellite treatment facility, how's that going? Uh, still under construction. The building's pretty much mm -hmm. up and done, uh, working on the site work around there. Uh, we'll also be adding a big project this year to that is the uh, storm and sanitary sewers mm -hmm. going to that. So basically almost half the job is complete. Second half, second phase starts this summer and we'll be uh, doing storm sewer piping to that facility. That's our tentative. When you'd like it to be uh, running? probably, you know, December of seventeen. We hope to have everything uh, completed. All right, very good. And that was an unfunded mandate from the IEPA, IEPA Illinois Environmental Protection Agency, that right. they didn't pay for it, but they forced us to do it. And it was what about a twenty million dollar project overall? It's yep. Overall, so it's a very big project. It'll, it'll probably pay off very much for Mattoon. Public Works building is uh, the new Public Works building on East DeWitt Avenue. Got underway uh, late March there, and uh, it's a project you guys have been looking looking forward to for a while. Yes, uh, if you go by it now, you'll see that the steel has started going up this this week. Uh, the concrete's been poured, uh, the foundation of the building. So uh, very excited to have this project done. It's it's taken a while, but uh, we're finally moving on it, and it will be you know be completed this year. All right, look and forward. the weather slowed us down somewhat on getting started on that too. 
Yeah, it's uh, Central Illinois weather can be challenging. It yeah, affects, pro affects project like that. Uh, Marshall Avenue, phase two of that project will uh, take place uh, next, next year? Next year, yeah. All right, very good. So looking uh, forward to first that. phase was completed. It's very nice. And second phase will be next year, third phase of the following year. Uh, next year, we will uh, go from uh, 9th Street to, uh, what, 14th Street? Street. And yeah. then the following year, 14th to 17th. And so that will uh, reconstruct Marshall Avenue. Very good. Uh, a lot of these things we talked about last fall, last time you guys were on. Another thing we were talking about was almost complete was was the Heritage Park there in the downtown area. And uh, talk about it's, it being a new addition to the downtown area. Uh, it's really the tie-in between what we've started at Progress Square, uh, the what we call the Matt Toon YMCA parking lot, uh, the depot parking lot, and it's the last little area there that hadn't been completed. It's been completed. We had a... Uh, downtown festival this past Christmas um, and it was excellent. We had people walking up down, they were walking into the park, uh, we had a lighted tree, everyone was going up there getting pictures taken so it, it really is starting to get some use now. We still have some plantings to do this spring which we've been working on and uh, just look forward to having some concerts this summer on okay. Fridays in there. So. Well, and speaking of that area also, uh, recently the Thrifty Building, or some refer to it as the First National Bank Building, uh, th there uh, to the uh, east of the depot has uh, been sold. Okay. And uh, also, you know, that wall, we hope to put a mural on that wall eventually as well on that building. So another, another mural uh, That's to, right. the, to the downtown area. Very nice. Uh, let's talk some economic development. And uh, around the time last fall we had you guys on, the uh, the Staples Building was about to close, but Harbor Freight is obviously there now. Yes, we are very fortunate. Uh, Harbor Freight was looking in that area at the time at a couple other buildings. So once they heard that the Staples Building became available, they jumped on that. Um, we've had several projects that we talked about last time that were underway that are being completed. Uh, the KC Summers uh, GMC dealership uh, is completed now beautiful building. We've had uh, Pilsen's Auto Center also. Uh, they're under construction right now with an expansion. Um, we've had the Fujiyamas come in, uh, Copper Creek Cottages, Memory Care just opened up this week, Sarah Bush uh, Walk-In Clinic uh, has been under construction. It is going to be open by the end of the month. Um, just several new bank out there nice. uh, across from Wendy's as well, First National Bank. Uh, several construction in town, um, a coffee shop that's going to be at 6th and DeWitt, a Crave Coffee. Um, it's under construction right now, uh, remodeling. And uh, several good things coming on. Um, Thompson Thrift is looking at starting a, another little strip mall between Cracker Barrel and Aspen Dental, and it's going to be a five or six different units. So again, we're talking about several things you just listed there. Uh, the well, and there's some other uh, development potential in that uh, area as well. well. So that whole area out there is growing and developing, and we're just delighted that uh, that is happening. Uh, yeah. Planet yeah. Fitness uh, has opened, and they're doing a, a great business also uh, in that general area around the mall. Yeah, very good. The Cop Copper Creek Cottages has really taken shape there. It's a beautiful facility. Beautiful and you facility. The ribbon cutting was just recently? Yes. All right, very good. And uh, the, the walk-in clinic also, uh, you have a ribbon cutting coming That's through that coming too? That's coming up, yes. Very good. Uh, good to hear about uh, more things going on there. Very busy area, or already getting busier. Uh, a year later, let's, uh, let's recap uh, maybe reception of Mattoon residents to all these new businesses that we, you know, that we were talking about a year ago. Uh, how, how have people been uh, receptive to these new businesses and their addition to Mattoon? I, I think it just shows that people are uh, interested in, in developing in Mattoon and uh, remodeling their existing buildings because we have a lot of that going on as well in the downtown area and other areas as, as well. So, uh, you know, people are looking in it. We, we talk with developers all the time that we can't necessarily talk about, but, you know, we've, we've got a lot of interest going on in Mattoon and we want to keep that, keep moving forward. You know, everybody wants a steakhouse, and we'd love to have a steakhouse, too. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, and we're working on it, but, yeah. you know, demographics is, is the key. Well, and Kyle does a great job in uh, doing, working with economic development. We have a tremendous relation, working relationship with uh, Ed Dowd and the Chamber of Commerce and also uh, 
Angela Griffin and Coles together. So uh, the school district, I mean, uh, Lakeland College, we all work together on some of these projects and different things. And uh, so, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, the city council, as I mentioned a moment ago, uh, very pro-business, proactive, and uh, we do everything we can to try to bring in different businesses because that increases employment and keeps people in the community. A lot of organizations you just listed, they're all working together. Good to hear about the, yeah. the teamwork that's being done to improve Mattoon and the area. Uh, one thing that is kind of coming to a close later this summer is, is the GE plant there, and it's been a long-standing business in Mattoon. Uh, 70 years. 70 years, wow. And uh, once that closes, uh, is there looking, looking to possibly fill something there potentially? Uh, yes, we, we're in contact with them, and, and uh, GE Corporate, you know, hasn't really given us much information yet because they want to wait till it gets closer to time of the closing. But, uh, you know, we are in talks and trying to figure out what's going to happen with that facility in the future and if there's anything that we can maybe partnership on. Another major employer in, uh, in Mattoon, you mentioned, Tim, before we started taping, uh, Donley's is looking to hire maybe a little bit? Yes. Uh, my understanding is they're looking to hire 100 people and... Uh, there is a, a plant uh, in Tennessee that is being closed and potentially I'm told 52 families may be moving here from that plant. Now, whether those people will decide to leave Tennessee or not is questionable, but I, uh, some of those people have already been here. Families have been here looking at the community and looking around. So, uh, you know, that's always good as well. And Coles Together is working on a number of different projects, which, you know, we can't talk about right now. but. All right. Ver Hopefully some of them will develop. Well, stay tuned for that one. We'll, next time we'll, we'll catch up on that one next time you guys are on. As we wrap up here, gentlemen, uh, the summer is a busy time for Mattoon. Uh, ball games will be going on, Bagel Fest. Uh, what do you guys look forward to with the summer in Mattoon? Because it's very busy. Well, like you said, the sports, we have a lot of baseball and softball tournaments every summer. That'll continue to do well again this, this summer. Uh, but then, like I said, we're always trying to do other things as well. And on Fridays, they usually have tourism, usually has music, in the downtown area. So we're just looking at different ways to do more. Um, you know, we're doing some more small theater stuff in the Lone Elm Room in the depot. And that'll continue through the summer as well. So um, just stay active, keep people out and about, and um, excited to have those projects going on. Those well, and the farmer's market is moving from... Uh, Peterson Park to a uh, rural king in Matt Toons. Okay. So that's uh, a change that uh, hopefully people will hear about and will go out there. All right, change of venue for that. Very good. Gentlemen, that's all I have for you. It's been a pleasure having you on. Uh, Tim Gover, the mayor of Matt Toon. Thank you very much. Kyle Gill, Matt Toon City Administrator. Pleasure Thank having you. you guys on again. Thank you for having us. Thank Look you. Look forward to it. Excellent. And coming up next here on City Spotlight, we'll head out to Lytle Park and talk with Matt Toon Township Park District Justin Grady to talk about the work being done at Lytle Park. But first, let's take a look at some of the upcoming activities going on in Mattoon. We're back here on City Spotlight. We've left the studio. We have Lytle Park as our background. We're going to talk about Lytle Park and some other things as well with Justin Grady of the Mattoon Township Park District. Welcome back to the program, Justin. Thank you. Uh, two years ago in the summer of uh, 2015, we talked to you uh, about Lytle Park, and uh, one of the things you were talking about there was a grant that you guys were hoping to get through, and well, we have some stuff behind us that we'll talk about. Uh, that grant went through, and uh, finally, yes, finally, it did. yeah, it finally uh, did. The, the budget negotiations in 2016 brought the money back to us, so uh, late, very late in 2016, we found out that we would get the funding that was promised, a $400,000 OSLAD grant, which is for open, spa open spaces, land acquisition, and development. And when you found out that the grant had gone through and after all this waiting, your reaction was? Uh, eager to get started. <laughs> eager to get started. Uh, we had already bid out two portions of the project uh, while we were waiting and so the playground behind us had been bid out and the pavilion off to the east had been bid out 
but for us to get the uh, the full impact of the grant, we had to add the third component back in. So um, the new age area across the street here is was added in. Uh, I think the bids were due in February and awarded in March. So, so let's talk about these different uh, new additions that are currently being worked on. Uh, sure. We have this new playground behind us. It's uh, right next door to the uh, children's garden, or is this an addition to the children's garden? What is this gonna be? Well, the, the children's garden fits right in with the, the whole play area here off of Western Avenue. Uh, what we were going after was a, a nature-based playground. Everything we have here is custom designed by myself, a landscape architect, architect and a, uh, some timber framers that are from Northern Illinois. Um, a lot of it looks similar to other playground equipment you'll see, but there's, it's all timber and netting. So uh, all the trees were harvested just for us. Um, they've been here assembling for about five weeks. When I, when I first pulled up and, and saw, saw what had been done, it's uh, very large pieces of, of timber there. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what, are, what are you looking to achieve with this? Well, so, so many playgrounds nowadays are just metal and plastic, and we wanted to get back to more nature-based activity. That's part of what goes on in our children's garden, which is right adjacent to it here. But there's a lot of things where can't, kids can get their hands dirty. You know, there's dirt piles, there's sandboxes, there's mud kitchens. Uh, just, you know, we got uh, scrap wood that we've turned into building blocks, you know, hundreds of pieces. They build stuff six, eight, ten feet high with that. So, you know, just different th ways to engage the children rather than the cookie cutter type pieces of playground equipment that come out of the catalogs. All right, let's move over to the east. You referenced some other things. I see a new kind of walkway over here to right. our east. Uh, what, okay. What's going on over there? The, the area between the tennis courts uh, was one of the three components that got us the, the grant, but it, from the uh, grant administrators and the, and the board that decides, that was the most important piece for them. It's called a new age area, and age standing for an active green environment. The, uh, the development of this concept was it from the University of Illinois. It was a collaboration between the Department of Kinesiology and the Department of Landscape Architects. And what they were trying to do was create ideas to use in a public park setting that basically offered older, not older adults, but adults, stealth exercise. So we've got a couple of bocce ball courts over there. We're gonna have 20 uh, raised bed community gardens. There's uh, a lot of sidewalk for walking. There's a yoga circle that is a 45 foot diameter. The YMCA is already lined up to do classes there. It'll have ornamental grasses around the outside of it to filter anybody's view from, you know, gawkers. Uh, there's a, a, a TheraBand frame. TheraBands are the exercise rubber bands that people use okay. in, in physical therapy. Um, it, it will look almost like a sculpture, but it'll give you the ability to pull from different heights and different angles to work upper body, lower body with the different types of exercise bands. There's changes in elevation. There's changer, changes in the, the texture of the material you walk in. There's some areas where there's stairs. There'll be a small gazebo up there. A lot of landscaping. Uh, we're going to have birdhouses over there that uh, community people can lower and raise with cranks or with uh, cleats like a flag, more exercise, fill the bird feeders, put them back up. We're gonna have bird baths over there that you can take a, we have an antique pump that you, you crank pump, but it will pump water underground to some rocks that are hollowed out for bird baths. There'll be uh, a number of other little nuanced things over there going on. Um, there's a, gonna be a couple shade areas. Uh, we'll have some tables over there. They'll have, uh, you know, tabletop for checkers or uh, chess, and and most of those things that, uh, like the checkers and chess, the bocce balls, the therabands, we're going to have those available for people to use uh, when we have staff around. But the idea is we want them to get used to using them, and then go out and make their own purchase so they can use these facilities anytime they want and see how, you know, fun and and enjoyable the stuff is. Looking at that area that you just talked about uh, with the playground, you can see the physical transformation. But mm -hmm. there, you just mentioned a lot of things going on over there. Prior to that, was it just tennis courts? So it's, it's a big, it's a big that, transformation. That area was empty. Okay. Uh, we used to have a basketball court over there uh, many, many years ago, and we used to have a have a sand volleyball court there. Um, that 
you know, just nobody was playing on the sand volleyball anymore, and we had uh, transformed the, the uh, basketball court into another uh, use. But part of what happened to us when the original grant was given to us in 2014, we began removing things that were in the way of what we were going to do. So we had eliminated a couple pieces of a playground over here. We had taken out the hard surface over there that uh, was a basketball court. And over where the uh, pavilion is, there was some old playground equipment there from the old Bennett School that we removed. So when we went out to bid the first part of this project, not knowing if we were going to get any state money yet, we were really addressing the two areas where we took out the play equipment because you know, we got this great grant and then when they pulled it, we had less things to offer in our park now than we did before we got the grant. And that was kind of, kind of rubs you the wrong way, you know? So we were trying to reestablish those two areas and get those started. Once we knew we were getting the grant, we bid, we, uh, bid out the area with the new age. So it's, it's running a little bit behind the timeline of the other two. The other two were hoping to be done by the first week of June. Uh, the, the area between the tennis courts, the new age area, we're hoping to be done by 1st of July. And just prior to us starting to tape, you had some more stuff being dropped off. So yep. it's a continuous process. Oh yeah, yeah, it never ends. It's, it's very exciting though. It's, it's easy to get up in the morning, come across the street and go to work, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Another thing that I noticed physically over to the east, a new, a new pavilion. Yes. So the, uh, the pavilion is also a custom design pavilion for us. Uh, we worked with the timber framers. Uh, it's called their called, uh, company is Trillium Dell. They're located up near Knoxville, Illinois. They're preeminent timber framers in the middle part of the country. Um, that is a very, very complex piece over there. It's it's gorgeous to get close up to and look at, but it's got other things associated with it also. We we have a couple pavilions in the park. They're always booked every weekend from you know May to October. <laughs> One of the complaints is the bathrooms are a long walk. So we have bathrooms associated with this pavilion. Right. They're under the same roof. So I'm gonna step back for a second. This, this started with a master plan that we started working on in 2012. Right. And we did an analysis of the entire park and what some of the needs were. Pavilion and restrooms was one of them. Um, but we also wanted to make a better effort at being stewards of the environment and, and using sustainable practices. So we had some money in the bank. We were fortunate to get this grant. So one of the things we've, we've done out there is we will be capturing all the rainwater off of that enormous roof. Oh, wow. And it will, it's almost like an art piece, but it will come off the end of the building and fall into a, a catch basin that'll be laid out with rocks and in, the, in a garden. We'll go into a cistern it will be used for flushing urinals and toilets. From what we can find out, there's only there's one place on U of I's campus where they use gray water to flush uh, urinals, and any other places in Chicago. So this is a big deal for us. Then we're also going to have solar panels on top of it, which wow. will be because the pavilion doesn't have high need of electricity on a regular basis, it's mainly on the weekends, we've decided to just feed that back into the grid. So we basically get 33 cents on the dollar for what we feed back. Not you know, only it's a great it, offer. Not only is it another uh, pavilion to this park, it seems to be state of the art, has a lot of uh, oh, absolutely. multifaceted. Yep. Okay, so you told me before uh, we started this interview, the, the work started physically going uh, March 20th. Uh, the, the timber framers started in March. Uh, the uh, people building the uh, restroom, doing the masonry work, started in January. Okay, very good. And I love to ask this question, and I always get a variety of answers on, on projects that are being worked on. What is the timetable for completion on some of these things? So we're, we're hoping the pavilion and the playground behind us are both done by 1st of June, but we've had a lot of rain and <laughs> I don't want to complain about how muddy it was here because I know how much how many people have had house damage <laughs> but it's really set us back with right. as wet as March and April were this year um, so and, and even early May so you know it may be a couple weeks longer than that but we want to do it right not fast okay. uh, we've been really fortunate with the timber framers uh, mm -hmm. I mean they're they're magicians with what they do uh, it's, it's a very very exacting type of labor where you know getting things just perfectly joined together is, can sometimes take an hour just to get one joint you know and 
So they've, they've spent a lot of time on here, but it's turning out to be really gorgeous. We're really thrilled. Last question on all this awesome work that's finally going on from this grant. What are you most excited about what it's going to bring to Lytle Park and the community of Mattoon and everyone else? I know that's you know, probably a five to ten minute answer, but, I, but what are you most excited about what it's what it's going to do to this park? Well, I, I know that it, everybody's going to enjoy it. It's 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 awesome for the additions here. But I think of the three, I'm probably most excited about the new age area because it's something different. This is a playground. It's a wood playground. It's a netting playground. It's got some unique unique, unique features, but it's a playground. It's a pavilion and a restroom. It's unique. It's beautiful, but it's it's another pavilion. The new age area is something new and different, and I think that's really awesome for us. And I'm really proud of it. Uh, I, if I can, I would like to make mention that on starting on June 2nd, mm -hmm. we have free movies in the park every Friday night, all, all right. through the summer, except for the weekend of Bagel Fest. And we've already made arrangements with Sound Source Music and the Mattoon Arts Council to right. have some of the uh, kids who take lessons at Sound Source and through the middle school and the high school are going to be playing in the new pavilion before the movie starts. So there's already things happening with these these new additions to the park that are all really exciting and and the community is really behind this. So we're really excited about it. So and I know your final question, should I just answer it? Pool. Pool. pool? Yes. Pool. We plan to open on Sunday, uh, May 28th, the Sunday of uh, Memorial Day weekend. Uh, we use our Saturday for in-service training with uh, all the guards, and I've got a lot of new ones this year. So, fantastic! But, uh, that's why we uh, don't open on the Saturday, but we'll be ready to roll on Sunday. All right, so folks watching this program, uh, beginning of June, got caught up on all this wonderful work going on here at Lytle, Lytle Park, and obviously the pool getting going. So, uh, the park and the pool, uh, very busy times here at Lytle Park and pool. So, it is. congratulations on busy the Busy and exciting. I love it. Very good. Justin Grady of the Mattoon Township Park District. Pleasure having you on City Spotlight again. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks to all of you for joining us for this latest episode of City Spotlight on Mattoon. We'll see you next time. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.